and welcome back to Mega Reacts. Today we're going to be watching Babylon 5, Season 4, Episode 15. Last episode was amazing. Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Five times amazing. So we had Delenn on Mimbar, and she's going to fight the head of the warrior cast, or she's going to she's gonna basically have the religious cast give up to the warrior cast, but then she pulls out this ancient tradition of surviving the light of the star of the sun of whatever the hell the lights of. So she gets in this light and she's going to die. And the head of the warrior cast jumps in there and he's a pussy. So he can't hang and he gets out. And then the going to sacrifice herself in front of the whole planet to, to prove her dedication to the cause. But Naroon, Naroon, my man, I have liked you since season one. I'm glad. I'm glad to see you had a most honorable and glorious death. So Naroon jumps in the light, pulls Delin out, like you get out of here, and he's like, "My heart is religious cast, and I take her place." And he dies. He dies. Sacrifice for her. She reforms the Great Council and the working cast. The builder cast is now the majority, which makes sense because they're the ones that do all the damn work. You got the warrior cast and the religious cast just constantly fighting, causing shit. And the other cast is just the ones that have to clean up after everybody. So now they have more power. Awesome. Awesome. I'll take it. We have uh, Lita on Babylon 5. So sad. Can't find a job. Can't make money. Why are people on Babylon 5 not helping this girl out after all she's done for Babylon 5? Y'all can't let her stay in a room at a discounted price or something? That's some bullshit. So she ends up going back to work for Bester, and the only catch is he gets her body when, <laughs> he gets her body when she dies, or the Psychor gets her body. Twisted. Twisted. And then let's not forget... My man Sinclair. Sinclair. <laughs> Sinclair's on my mind. My man Sheridan. My man Sheridan. Uh, I just watched earlier today uh, Jeff from Babylon 5 for the first time's reaction to War Without End Part 2. And then I did a little edit. So Sinclair is on my mind. Is on my mind. But uh, Sheridan. So Sheridan is done with Earth's shit. All right. He's like, we're going to war. We're going to start, you know, blowing up ships. We're going to do what we have to do because he's had his feel of this bullshit. So that's kind of where we're at. That's where we're at. This half of season four has been pretty damn good. One episode kind of lame, but... For the most part, all of season four has been great, but it feels like we are amping up pretty damn hard right now. So let's just get into it. But before we do, come on this journey with me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Patreon link in the description below. If this is Mega, let's get into it. Captain's personal log. Personal log. 2nd, 2261. War. Enough is enough. There it is. The war room. <laughs> Let's go. Avia. Vanda. What do they want? What's going on? I don't know. We're calling in all of our favors. We want ships. We want troops. We want full on military aid. Most of your governments have mutual defense treaties with Earth. As of right now, in exchange for our continued patrol along your borders, I'm declaring those treaties null and void. I have no problem with this. Of course you don't, Jakar. You have been here for us from the beginning. Thank you, Jakar. They ain't fixed his eye yet. It's not only our people <laughs> who are at risk here. Clark's propaganda machine is feeding the anti-alien hysteria back home. We ask that each of you contribute at least one destroyer-class ship to the defense of Babylon 5. Your people here will need to be protected in case Clark tries to retaliate. Beyond that, don't get involved. From now on, Earth stands alone. 
We're taking back Proxima 3. We're taking back Mars. Then, we're going to take back our home. Or die trying. Full on revolution here, folks. Full on revolution. Where are you going, Marcus? What's up? What's up? What's up? I could pull off the Marcus yeah, look. I really I think, think if I got right. the right outfit. Yeah. I've got it. You have an idea on those ships? Yes. The Heracles under Captain Trevor Hall, the Juno under Captain James Mandala, the Pollux, Captain Elizabeth Morgenstern, the Nemesis, Captain Yoshi Kawagawa, the Nemesis. The Vesta, Captain I like that Edward name. McDougan, and the Furious, Captain Stephanie Eklund. Stephen, how are you doing with the telepaths we rescued from the shadows? Well, you can wait them for brief periods, but they're still under the influence of the mind control devices. I haven't found a way to remove them without causing damage. Take them down to the planet. Need them mobile. Get some super as tech. Can as fast as you can. Not for this operation, but soon. They've got the place buttoned up tight. We're going to have a hell of a time fighting our way in there. Mm -hmm. We'll hit them in waves. Try to isolate the ships we need to destroy from the ones who won't fight unless they have to. And we'll give them a chance to surrender or join up. And if they don't? We take them out. Hey, I don't like we take them out. You do. But either we commit humans killing humans. Or we don't do it. That's how we've Once been we doing it. Trigger, we can't hesitate to pull for the 10,000 years. This our guy on Centaur. No, this is Veer. What's up, Veer? Oh, oh. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Dreaming about murder. Oh. Poor man. Poor man is really weighing on him. Open. It looks uh, like you had a late night. No, not actually. They just um, got us up very early to brief us on their new campaign. What new campaign? To take back Earth. No, 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 no. I imagine you'll want to sign on again. Not with Sheridan. Does it your home world matter to you? Of course it matters. So you're not going to fight for your world? Nope. Of course I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight in my own way. You just tell Lando I can't. Uh, mind control is later. strong. Ball headed bastard. That was a pretty good transition. Pretty, pretty good. Lando, Jakar, make them wait. Make them wait. Enter. <laughs> That's the petty Jakar from season one we love. <laughs> have been very difficult for both of us, Shikar. Harder on you, perhaps. Uh, perhaps. But as the human perhaps. Being, it has not exactly been a picnic for me, either. You sacrificed your dignity, your pride, your eye, to help free Nam. But still, in the process, you did help my own world. And I never thank you for that. I have no interest in your thanks. I did not think that you would. But it is there anyway. He must give it anyway. It must be said. As I said, a hard year. Yes. A hard year. When I saw you in that cell, beaten chained as i said we have never been friends we will never be friends but i did feel for you as much as i did not want to in the beginning it was little more than the sympathy one might feel for any trapped animal i came to respect you your respect matters to me even less than your thanks you are not going to give me even an You have to move time. beyond that, Jakar. I thought you have I moved beyond that. I promised if you cooperated. I could have easily changed my mind, but I kept my promise. I have spoken with my government. 
We will not remain neutral in the matter of Sheridan's war with Earth. I have convinced them to throw our official support to Sheridan. Nice, nice, nice. If two forces recently at war with one another can agree on this, Perhaps it might help to convince the others. It would be a powerful statement. Because while I do not know who the enemy is any longer, I know who is I not. Know who my friends? Yes. Are. Come on, Jakar. Come on, Jakar. For the greater good. Don't throw it in his face. It's fifty-fifty. Well, it's not in his face. Jakar. Jakar. I thought you moved beyond your pettiness. I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. We've received the information we've been waiting for. We can proceed with the attack against the forces holding Proxima 3. We'll hit them in three waves. Pull their forces apart and surround them with superior. Now, I've never seen Star Trek, the original series. I know, I know. I need to watch it. Don't give me shit. But I have seen Deep Space Nine and the episode Trials and Tribulations. There is a scene shot very much like this with Kirk walking in front of the men. I assume that's part of the original episode as well as the Deep Space Nine episode. This has got to be a callback to that, right? Right? A callback to Star Trek? Just the way it's shot? Assault base to Unit 1. Take position. Stand by to initiate jump. Jump. That was cool. <laughs> that was pretty cool looking. Now it gets interesting. All units, remember, do not fire unless fired upon first. They may not fight for Clark, but they will defend themselves. So don't back them into a corner. Fleet Command to Vesta and Furies, come about and engage rear targets. This is Captain Edward McDougan of the Vesta, a hostile vessel. Mac, what the hell are you doing? Maintain radio silence. Becky. Long time no see. Old friends. John, get the tail out of here. This isn't going to work. Oh, come on, Mackie. President Clark is he's out of control. He's got you out here on an illegal mission. Back at the academy, you used to pose moral conflicts for us as part of our training. You said that soldiers aren't machines. They have to think. They have to decide if, a, if an order is moral or not. But what does your conscience tell you? Open fire. Heracles is out in fire. Other ships moving to support. Fighters launching. All forces, engage any hostile target. Fire at will. I repeat, fire at will. Space battles. You will engage enemy ships at once. Do you copy? Engage enemy yes, sir. And he once. engages your ship because you're the enemy. Negative fleet command. The vessel will not engage in support of illegal orders. This is a court martial offense, Mackey. You understand that? Commander Philby. Under the authority of Earth Force Command, I am hereby promoting you to captain. Oh, and order he's you to gonna murk you, dude. Union. You will bring the Vesta into the fight. Do you copy, Commander? I always knew you wanted a promotion, Bob. Never knew how badly until now. Mackie, go. Commander Philby's promotion has just been postponed by the crew. <laughs> the best is non-hostile. Nice. We are standing down. Confirm, Mackie. Two down. 
free. Juno is withdrawing from battle. Nemesis has taken severe damage and is offering to surrender. That is war. That is war. War is death. Have the captains of the remaining ships. You should have used a nuke. <laughs> Let's see if we have survivors or else. Uh. What happened here today was difficult for all of us. But it's over now. What we have to decide now is what we do next. Option one. You and your crews can return home. We won't stop you. Now, sooner or later, the Heracles and her crew will have to answer for their actions before a military tribunal. But that's not our problem for now. Option two. Join us. You can stay Join the resistance. Protect Proxima three from further retaliation by President Clark. And option three. You can come with us. Your oath is to the Alliance and to the people back home, not to any particular government. You're splitting that hair mighty thin, John. <laughs> I? I like you, Mackie. Watch, Ministry of Peace, Ministry of Truth. We need to talk it over. Yo, we get these new fancy uniforms that I'm wearing. Aren't they cool? <laughs> They're way better than the Earth Force uniforms. Come on. And I'm hoping Jakar was just being sly about it and he will join and maybe share a drink. Issue the joint statement. I will sign my name, but not on the same page. You understand <laughs> that? Page. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, of course. Different page. I'll even let you sign first. The others have decided. Commander Levitt is going to retire from the field. He's going to take the Heracles to Beta 9 for repairs. Tagawa? I want to sign on with you. And so do I. <laughs> this is Commander Susan Ivanova bringing you the voice of the Resistance. Today, elite forces dispatched from Babylon 5 engaged a destroyer group stationed at Proxima 3. Both sides endured heavy losses. Many of the destroyers enforcing the blockade have now joined forces with our ships. The campaign to retake Earth has begun. As a result, we send this plea to all cruisers and carrier groups that have chosen to stand down rather than execute the illegal orders of President Clark. Join us. Destination, Mars. What are you doing, Garibaldi? Nope. I got some people in high places taking care of things. If you say so. When you're coming back. I'm not. I'm not. Garibaldi's out. Until they pull them back in. <laughs> in a related move, the Centauri and Narn governments issued a joint statement today recognizing the legitimacy of the liberation of Proxima and throwing their support behind the new campaign. I'll be right back with you. That was Babylon 5, Season 4, Episode 15. A great episode. Amazing space battles. We had ships blowing up. We had all sorts of just space craziness and i loved every minute of it the cg looks really really good now this is a remastered version maybe that's why but it really didn't feel dated at all like i was completely completely just engulfed in the war that is that the word engulfed i don't know it was awesome though it was awesome and we got some ships to join our side some of the people are retiring it's a hot mess on the earth force side people want to follow orders and people don't want to follow orders we have mutinies and and craziness speaking of craziness jakar londo uh they came together to sign some sort of release to say that the narn and the centauri are backing are backing sheridan two mortal enemies coming together to support babylon 5 that says a lot 
<laughs> but Jakar will not sign the document on the same page as Londo. That was hilarious. But really what stood out this episode was the space battle. The space battle, so good. I'm probably going to watch just the space battle a couple more times because I love that shit. I love it. And yeah, we're just we're just moseying on along with this plot of Earth being the bad guy and Garibaldi's going to Mars because he's brainwashed, going to go work with his super rich benefactor. And I don't know what's going to happen with him. I'm kind of uh, with the whole Garibaldi thing, to tell you the truth. I am positive, though, whenever everything is laid out, I'm going to love it because JMS is an amazing writer. But as of right now, I'm just, I kind of wish Garibaldi would have just died in the Shadow War and he would be gone because I don't really like the road he's taken. But I do have faith it will all, it will all be worth it in the end. And yeah, that's really all I have to say about this episode. Is there anything else? There is not anything else. So hopefully you enjoyed my reaction. If you did, continue to come on the journey with me. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Patreon link in the description below. This is Mega signing off.